Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Friday live reading for May 15th. I hope you're all well out there. Uh, today, our feature readers are Alison Braid, who's here in Vancouver, Josephine Greenland, who's all the way over in Edinburgh, and Jude Neal, who's on beautiful Bowen Island. Give a wave, Hi. everybody. <laughs> Hi. So this is an extra special poetry day today because not only do we have two of our readers are poets, um, but we are also announcing the Magpie winners. So our Magpie Award for Poetry, this is the sixth year we've had it. Uh, and so uh, I'm just going to bring on poets one at a time to say hello. These are the shortlisted poets and we have a few of them here. Uh, so first up, we have Kenna Bell. Uh, and Kenna, where are you from? I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. All right. Uh, we have Maria Ford. And um, where are you based, Maria? I'm in Ottawa, Canada. OK, our capital. What's the weather out there in Des Moines and Ottawa? It's pretty humid here. Pretty humid? humid and warm. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> in Ottawa, it's finally spring. It is finally spring. We had snow a few days ago. Oh, wow. Um, and then we have Helen Gowans. Helen, where are you? I don't think Helen can hear us. Um, I, I believe she's based here in BC. I can't hear anything. Oh, there she is. Uh, can you hear us now, Helen? OK, we'll bring Helen back. We've got Charlene. Now, I'm going to mispronounce your name, I'm sure. Kwiatkowski? Oh, yeah, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and you're here in BC as well, right? Yeah, in Vancouver. Vancouver, nice. And we have Jeff Ford, uh, who is in Quebec, Sherbrooke, Quebec, I believe. That's right, Jeff Parano. Oh, sorry. I've, That's all right. I've got Maria Ford sitting next to you there. <laughs> Jeff Parent. Uh, no and what's the weather like in Sherbrooke? It is um, mild and gray. Mild and gray. Well, at least it's not snowing, right? Oh, yeah. We had an early <laughs> spring this year. And we have Aaron McGregor, who is also Hi. shortlisted. And where are you located, Aaron? Um, St. Albert, Alberta, just outside of Edmonton. Oh, right. And what's the weather like there? Today it's beautiful, but it's been a bit chilly the last few days. We've had sort of a, a spring that can't decide if it wants to be plus 20 or plus 4. So. Oh, wow. All right. Well. Um, and missing today, we don't have uh, shortlisted poets John Blair, um, Kat McNichol, or Kara Waterfall. Uh, so none of these poets know who's won, and uh, we're going to uh, be announcing uh, a runner-up in between each reading and then the winner at the end. So stay tuned. It's going to be a surprise for everybody. Our first reader for today is Alison Braid. Uh, Alison is, well, was, I guess, formerly a Prague-based Canadian writer at the time when she was published in our magazine uh, with her poem, Mysterious, and that was in issue 23. Um, her work has also appeared in Train, Bad Nudes, The Puritan, Prairie Fire, CV2, The Maynard, Room, Baron, and Poetry is Dead. Uh, she received an honorable mention in Grain's 2018 Short Grain Contest and was shortlisted for CV2's uh, Young Buck Poetry Prize in 2018. Uh, she has a new book out from Anstruther Press, right? Um, oh. And that's uh, Little Hunches, which you can see up there. Uh, with a beautiful cover, very uh, reminiscent of a Dutch painting, except for the watermelon, which is not very Dutch at all. So, uh, welcome, Alison. Thank you very much. Um, so, I'll start with Asturias, um, which is in Little Hunches as well. Um, and Asturias is an area in northern Spain, so a very green part of Spain. 
Asturias. Our campground pool a disturbance of color in the green belt, while I'm, as I'll always be, clumsy in a red one piece. The bartender pours cider from a great height to inject a flat drink with effervescence. In drunken relaxation, I pledge allegiance to extended summer, to the sun a flat tennis ball, to magpies ducking away in pairs. You ask what there is to do. Pinhole camera, pinball, alcohol. You're lonely in these puffed up days of summer. My own low pressure microclimate prevails, rings out the pool's cobalt. Flash north storm restoring the deck to dampened normality. A boy dives, orbits something out of sight, surfaces cold, cult like Obtained only water to cup in his hands. I slump back into myself, the lounge chair. A good day to fly, says the boy's mother, pointing to sky shot through by absent airplanes. Um, and this next one is uh, called Confessional. Um, my partner and I just moved into a new place in Vancouver, so you can probably see we have nothing on the walls except for um, one of my friends sent a letter with a black and white um, cross-section of brain. So that's all I've had to look at, and it uh, made its way into a poem. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Confessional. Held up to the light, a naked walnut resembles the human brain. I hammer nails into the afternoon in the shade of the walnut tree, its leaves wide and smooth as bars of soap. A walnut drops into grass, its shell in three segments, a rare misstep by nature. All spring I bear the walnut from pocket to pocket, its hull staining the hand I worry it with. Walnut, the dark wood of confessionals, the only difference between what we call a confessional and what we call a curtain and what we call a coffin being the curtain. The meat of my mind is tender. On days it rains, I confess, loneliness blows through me like a gale. Um, and this is the last poem I'll read. So it's after a friend leaves the lake house and we're alone. After a friend leaves the lake house and we're alone, our driftwood fire billows into life again, a leaf of fury in the grate. Our new tuness frightens us into bed from where, early morning, we watch a pair of swans fish in the shallow water. Like feathered pendulums you could time your eggs by, the steady tick-tock of their bodies dipping under, coming up long-throated with weeds. You call the lake the ocean, ask if I will walk with you by its side, and I laugh. For what is this lake? All 100 crashing, white-capped kilometers of it, if not the biggest body of water you've ever seen and touched and been touched by. The stubborn wind reaches cold hands into our pockets as we comb the beach, waves warbling through their watery song. Inside, I tend to our warmth as I might a poem adding, turning over, drawing together, and then scattering the hot coals. As the room shifts into shadow, the fire leaps in our peripheries, neither of us moving to switch on a lamp. The sun carries its bright wick behind the mountains, where it ignites a woman as she wakes, faces the spool of her lover in bed, the coins of her eyes still closed to the light. Thank you very much. Those are wonderful, Allison. Your, your poems are so, um, I don't know, pastoral, musical. I, they just take me right out of the room and into this sort of beautiful green space. Uh, I'm just wondering, what, uh, what are your inspirations uh, for, for poetry? Like, what, what causes you to write? Um, I think often it is place. When I was living in Prague, I found myself writing a lot about um, Vancouver and the Okanagan, where I'm from too. So I think just a lot of it is noticing the pastoral and and the beautiful images there. Right, and so your your book Little Hunches uh, is forthcoming or, or out now? Is that? 
It is out now. Um, so I launched it in Toronto in March. Um, and the first printing is sold out. Um, so they'll do a second printing, but uh, the publisher can't really leave his house right now. So he's waiting until the lockdown is lifted and then they'll print some more. Um, and I am having this problem with stage 10 where it has opened a giant window over all the people backstage and I'm having problems bringing them on. Um, so, and it's a giant help window, ironically. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, Alison. Stay around because we usually do have questions that come in from the audience afterwards. And I'm going to uh, bring Mel on stage. Uh, and I was, I've been trying to bring Angela Rebrick on stage as well. Um, let's see if I can. I'd have to guess at who it is. <laughs> so Mel, how is it there on beautiful Bowen Island? It's sunny and getting towards summery. And we've had strange things, uh, a humpback whale out front of my house that I've never seen in my whole life, such a thing. Fantastic. Not now. Yeah. <laughs> At dusk. <laughs> At dusk, yes. Well, yeah, it, would be, it, it would be lovely to see the uh, a humpback if it possibly showed up, but I think that would be too much to ask for during our reading. I, I think it's too early in the day for it. Yeah. <laughs> And Shall I go ahead with oh, my announcement, or will we wait? For well, I've got two. Oh, I have another poet has shown up, so okay. um, I'm just going to bring her on stage if I can. We have Cat McNichol from Ontario is another of the shortlisted poets. Hi, Cat. Hi. You, it's lovely to see you. How how are things out there? Good. Rainy. Right Rainy. Oh, okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. How strange. It's sunny here in Vancouver and rainy on, in Ontario. <laughs> and oh, I managed it. I've got Angela Rebrick, so uh, another one of our shortlisted poets. So sorry for the delay. And uh, like I said, I'm having this thing where I've got this giant um, help screen that has popped up over top of all of you backstage so i am having to guess where you are and bring you on uh, but <laughs> but i think now we're ready for uh, a little drum roll and uh, mel is going to announce the second runner up in the magpies i'm very happy to be making this announcement i'm pretty excited uh, and talking to our poetry editors, uh, Dr. Emily Osborne and Daniel Cowper, both uh, published poets themselves and uh, very talented editors. And they were sorry they couldn't be here, but that gives me the uh, happy chance of making these announcements. And for our second runner-up for the Magpie Award for Poetry, we have the poem, I love this title, Think of agriculture as something the grasses did to people as a way to conquer trees by Maria Ford. And Rene Saklikar, who writes the most wonderful comments and is our uh, final judge, wrote that she admired this ambitious, uh, she admires ambitious, expansive poems. And we get that here with loads of interesting things. This poem also holds great diction and in the imagery. So congratulations, Maria Ford, and thanks for that wonderful poem. And I can't find Maria to bring her on stage, but maybe we'll just type something in the comments so that she knows that uh, she is the second runner up. Um, and I'm going to, I'm just trying to get the, uh, oops, every time I, every time I switch, it loses me my author here. Oh, that's, I'm just guessing in the dark, so if you keep seeing yourself flashing up backstage, it's because I'm guessing. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to go on to another contest winner. So Josephine Greenland was the winner of the Bumblebee contest last year, and her story, uh, The Wife Giver, uh, was published in issue 23. Uh, so Josephine 
she's a Swedish British writer um, like I said currently in Scotland but uh, I think moving back to Sweden uh, very shortly yeah. and <laughs> her work's been published in a number of print and online magazines including Fantastic Books Publishing, AHF Magazine, Litro and Dreamcatcher. She has an MA in Creative Writing from the University of Birmingham. Her debut novel Embers, written during her MA, is forthcoming in 2021 and we don't have a link, f uh, an image for that yet, but we will put a link to no. it. Um, yeah. And you can find her on josephinegreenland.com and at GreenlandJM on Twitter. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yeah, so the inspiration for Wife Giver came when I was living and traveling in Thailand last year. And I was on this guided tour in the northernmost part of the country, in the border region between Thailand, Myanmar and Laos, which is known as the Golden Triangle. And this place has been known to be one of the largest opium producing areas in the world since the 1950s. Now it's more a hotspot for tourists. And as part of a trip, we visited this museum of opium in this small town. And written on one of the walls was a folk legend about the origin of opium from the Aka people, who are a hill tribe in Northern Thailand. So I'm going to read the legend to you first. Once there was a young girl, so beautiful, she had many suitors. Of all these, seven men impressed her. One day, all seven came to ask for her hand in marriage. The girl did not want to choose one from among them for fear of making the others sad and jealous. She therefore decided to make love to all seven men, even though she knew that it would surely cause her death. When she could endure it no more, she asked for death and to be reincarnated as a beautiful flower. She said that whoever tasted the flower's sap would like it and want more, but that it would bear both good and evil. So when I read it there in the museum, I was struck by how the girl was silenced in the story and she was suppressed by this patriarchal authority. And I felt compelled to retell the story from her perspective, giving her voice life and empowering her. So here is Wife Giver. I guess I agreed to this, skin to cellulose, flesh to fibre, blood to latex, bones to roots, woman took man, man must return woman to earth. It's like going to sleep, except the sheet you pull over your head is soil. So they say, those men who will walk, sit, spit and piss on the ground to be my bed. In time, they will forget me. There are always other women. My suitors will approach them with their promises in one hand and their cock in the other, our betrothed was shoved in the bushes. At first, they were one hundred. I narrowed it down to seven. The fools all proposed on the same day. What did they think this was? A game of first come, first served? Cause no friction, he said. Cause no jealousy. So I took all seven. Treat everyone as equal, isn't that the Arca way? Wasn't that your way, Papa, with those women who weren't my mama? I guess you would shrug, like father, like son. All a daughter needs is the power between her legs and enough real power not to abuse it. Did you know that Mama still sleeps facing the door? All these years she stayed off your side of the bed, just in case you'd get it into your head or manhood to return. Whenever I've told her this, she looks away, holding on to the little dignity you haven't robbed her of already. Perhaps in your mind, I want to be buried alive, tucked away in my sins. You need me to want it, don't you? Woman cannot claim man. It's stuffy down here. You fail to mention that. Earth squeezes the oxygen out of my lungs and crawls into my mouth, iron and minerals on my tongue. Minty grass in my nostrils, crumbling black on my pupil. I rise and stand. The word big loses its value on your plant. Everything is up, everything is more. It makes me dizzy. My stalk body bends at the top, my bulb head tucks in its chin. If only I had arms and legs to tuck the dizziness in, to help me balance. 
Pins and needles prick the absence where my limbs should be. I've heard of phantom pains. One of my servants lost a leg to gangrene. An army of ants, he said, eating their way through the length of him. The sting of their bites festered long after the limb was gone. My limbs are in here somewhere, embedded in the fibres, flexing fingers and toes. Pity they will never see daylight again. For here you come in all your splendour, man, master of all things. Knife at the ready, although harvest is two moons away. But that was always your way, wasn't it? Plucking things before their time. Call me by my name before your mind is too slurred to think it. See the woman inside the flower's milky sap before you cut it and dry it and smoke it. Burials of the body are comers. Burials of the soul full stops. Papava somniferum. P for papa. Those stolen moments we had before you cut our bond in two. A father picking scraps of chicken meat from his daughter's teeth with a tiger tooth. Moments within moments that will soon be lost to you permanently. Perhaps this will hurt more than a little. Our bond is cut, but our blood remains the same. The choices of one affect the choices of the other. We must both see this through to the end. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine. That is such a powerful story. Um, it's 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 got so many levels to it, and um, I can really see why Bob Thurber chose it as the winner last year. It's just uh, it's it's very moving um, and uncomfortable in many ways too. Uh, so, are are all your stories that um, hard hitting? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my short stories, like the shorter the fiction I write, the more kind of um, graphic or vivid the images are, I think. A fair few of my short stories are kind of like feminist retellings of fairy tales or legends, so they tend to be quite bold um, and vivid. My my novels are a bit more like slow burners, it's um, a, bit, a bit more realistic. So... Yeah, I'd like to think that not all of my writing is like that, but yeah, <laughs> you just write what you feel has to be told, kind of. Oh, well, thank you for reading it. And it, it is so much more powerful, too, when it's read out loud. Uh, I always enjoy hearing stories in the author's own voice. It makes it, it, makes it double the impact somehow. Definitely. So stay around. Um, I'm sure there will be questions from the audience later, but we are going to um, bring Mel and our second runner-up onto stage while we announce the first runner-up. So first of all, congratulations, Maria, on um, uh, for this wonderful poem. And you said it's actually the it's not the title of the poem. It's an untitled poem, and that first is line is a quotation. So thank you. Congratulations, much. Maria. All right, Mel, so can we have another drum roll, please, for the <laughs> first runner up? We've, we've been here so long, I'm amazed I haven't had, I haven't got my drum kit out. <laughs> yeah. So Maria, congratulations. And uh, I'm, it's my pleasure now to announce the second runner, sec, uh, first runner up for the Magpie Award for Poetry. And the title is, it's quite exciting title is, They Say You Will Teach Me More Than I Will Teach You, by Charlene Kwiatkowski. Uh, congratulations, Charlene. Um, it's, uh, it's my pleasure to read uh, Renee's comment. I love Renee's comment on this excellent poem. Uh, kudos, writes Renee, to the writer of this sweet sonnet. Great tone and rhythm and wonderful unity of voice and focus, iambic pentamerish, pentamerish, <laughs> it's a true poet's feat, <laughs> and very hard to, it's a true poet's feat and one of my favorites. Charlotte, congratulations, well deserved. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, my husband just walked in with my daughter, so. Good to welcome oh. the news. <laughs> It's okay, you can bring the baby on screen. We love babies. 
I think she's finally <laughs> sleeping. So. Oh, well, yeah, no, no, no. I always let sleeping babies lie. Um, <laughs> so uh, that is, uh, that's wonderful. And stay around uh, when we announce the winner. And I have to say that, you know, it's, I know when we're judging short fiction, I don't judge poetry, but it's always so hard to, to pick the winner. And it's, it's so nice that we can have um, uh, runner up prizes uh, uh, because I'm sure um, all these poems are just so worthy of, of reading and of enjoying. And I uh, love that we can publish them. Yes. So congratulations. And I'm going to welcome on to the stage Jude Neal. So Jude has also um, been shortlisted for our Magpie Awards in, in several times, um, and we published her in issue 13 with a poem about light. She is a Canadian poet, opera singer, and mentor. Um, she's published eight books of poetry, two in the last six months, which is an incredible feat, um, and that up on the up on the screen now is her eighth book, Impromptu, um, uh, from Ecstasis Editions. And her work has been highly commended, shortlisted, named as a finalist in many international and national competitions. And she is going to be the writer in residence at Joy Kagawa House in June this year. She particularly enjoys giving public readings so she can connect deeply with an audience. And I know that public readings are, are kind of uh, not happening right now, but uh, we have this, which is the next best thing to public. So welcome, Jude. Thank you, Jen. I'm looking forward to uh, reading my poetry. So I'm going to read from you uh, a poem called About Light that won the, uh, for, for the magpie. This is about Parkinson's. I've been diagnosed with that, or my father had that, and I couldn't help but write about it. I could have died on this road alone, but for the fever of your touch. You pull crust off my naked loneliness and lessen this wake I drag behind me like a stillborn. You name my daughter in illness that hides in a bucket of shame. I'm sorry I forgot how to think about light trap, curious curled words clasped in my trembling hands. I hope you will love me despite endings, when I don't die with longing, I don't even die for your lips to press like wet poppies onto my white waxen face. In the end, we carry nothing but stones and skin knees down to the river. Bruised and broken, we aren't afraid we teeter onto one another's empty stage, arms suspended like angels before the fall. That's lovely. Thank you. I'm going to read from my new book now, Impromptu. This book is based on last year's poetry prompts around the world, National Poetry Month. And the first poem I'm going to read from it is Prompt 11. Talk about where you are from using snippets of memory. Where I am from. I am from dusty roads, trumpeter swans and frozen lakes. A twin brother who ran from grizzly bears into my young father's arms. I am from a two-seater outhouse and the call of gray wolves. My mother dancing in the kitchen and salmon so heavy, my small arms couldn't hold them. I am from my parents' anger and my young brother's invisibility. From Sunday roast dinner and washing dishes, peeling potatoes, listening to the Sunday opera and howdy doody, I am from guilt and shame, lemon meringue pie, and love, 
too many tears and running in the dark. I am from mom's backbone and dad's quiet laugh. Days at the beach laying on my stomach. Dogs and cats and the yowl of cougar. I am from worry and love beads. The grime of London and Nanaimo. From ambition and perfection perfectionistic drive. I am from fractured skull and ballet lessons and the endless possibilities of youthful love. Marriages and miraculous babies. I am from then and there, here and now, with my story still unraveling. And the last poem I'm going to read it was an interesting one. The prompt for this was, write a poem using two lines from a Shakespearean sonnet and create a completely new poem. And this is called Winter Gifts based on Sonnet 12 by William Shakespeare. That thou among the wastes of time must go then of thy beauty do I question make. You ask me once again if I am old, and I will respond in heart and mind, I am but young. Though my skin does so gently sag, and my hair has lost its luster, still I wrap myself in perfume's gown and wonder at the simple problem of mixing identity with form. For the balance of youth and wisdom is seen to be inviolable, and yet I yearn to call back time, see myself as blank and lovely though I much prefer the slower dances in your arms, guiding me forward, I am but a thorny rose whose blossoms fair and sweet doth bloom in the deepest days of this long winter. That is wonderful, Jude. I just love your poetry. I mean, I should say we've had Jude read many times at, at launches and things, and it's just, it, it really is transcendent. Thank you. Um, so I am going to bring our other two authors on stage now um, and just scroll back to some of the comments that have come up in the chats. Um, so Jessica Fabricius said, uh, for Allison, uh, Little Hunches has a delicious cover. The imagery of staying in bed all these days uh, really resonates. Um, and I guess everybody's kind of feeling that uh, that being at home and, and uh, you know, hunkering down feeling. Uh, how did you choose that cover? Or did you choose it? Or um, I didn't choose the cover, but it was... Um the designer at the press. There are a couple of watermelon poems uh, inside that I didn't read, so she fell in love with that cover. Right, perfect, yeah. And, oh, uh, Jessica says, uh, Wife Giver is beautiful, heartbreaking, but resonates in modern times as well. Um, did that flash story start out much longer? Yeah, it did. I think I had a second part to the story in like the first draft, which was kind of um, going on like basically continuing from the first draft, looking more long term at the effects of the father when he was smoking this opium. But then I realized that wasn't really as powerful as the first part and it didn't really lend much to the story itself. The message had already been delivered in the first half so I cut it basically <laughs> yeah right it is always hard cutting po uh, stories down but, yeah. but it is usually <laughs> worthwhile especially if you win yeah. a prize for doing <laughs> for keeping it <laughs> under 750 words yeah. um, and uh, there's there's lots of congratulations uh, rolling in for our uh, for our runners up, but also uh, Angela Rebrick says, 
Jude, Josephine, and Allison so enjoyed your readings. Uh, so yeah. um, before we get to the, uh, the final uh, magpie announcements, um, I just wanted to ask you, what are you guys working on now? Um, I'm working on my master's right now, so um, working in short fiction and poetry, so just lots of writing and reading. Nice. That's, I guess, a pretty good time to be doing that when there's not it much is. else to do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And Josephine? Um, yeah, so as I said before, my first novel is out next year, so I'm I'm still working on like I'm getting the copy edits next week from the copy editor so I've got that but then I'm also working on my second novel which is more of an adult crime novel set in Sweden. Oh wow. So, yeah. Things to look forward to. Uh, <laughs> and what about you Jude? I'm working on a gallery and poetry uh, uh, um, installation with a friend who is an amazing artist and she's chosen one of my long poems to inspire her to do her work and that'll be next year. I'm also just finished writing my night book. Oh wow. Uh, <laughs> so prolific. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, it is based on this month, this last month's poetry prompts. I wrote every day for a month. Wow. Uh, Angela just commented, Jude, you are a machine. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you for joining us. And I'm going to bring Mel on stage to announce the winner of the sixth annual Magpie Award for Poetry. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to be doing so. And I know that uh, Emily and Dan, uh, when they sent our, our poetry editors, um, Emily Osborne and Daniel Cowper, when they sent the poems in, they wondered how Renee Sacrecar would be able to choose because they were so good. They, the long list and the, and the short list was amazing. So the winner of the uh, Magpie Award for Poetry is um, On the Perseid Meteor Shower by John Blair. And this wonderful poem, the comments from Renee read, I love this well-constructed, thoughtful poem with its beautiful imagery and very strong ending. The mastery over the line is very good. Those space breaks within the lines of this one stanza poem give the readers a chance to breathe difficult to do well and still retain the tension of each line. Bravo, bravo. Congratulations, John Blair, on this terrific poem. Uh, congratulations, John. And unfortunately, John couldn't be with us here this morning um, to uh, get the surprise in person. Uh, but uh, I'm sure he will uh, be watching the replay or, and or the blog post, which will come out around noon today. Uh, so what I'd like to do now um, is just have readings from our two runners up. Uh, so let's, uh, let's start with Maria. Um, are you ready to read? <laughs> um, yeah. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. All right, um, as I said, it's an untitled poem, but it does uh, start with a quotation by Michael Pollan. Think of agriculture as something the grasses did to people as a way to conquer the trees. To survive at minus 60 degrees Celsius, Alaskan wood frogs concentrate their bodies with cryoprotectant sugar, freeze solid until spring, breathless, beatless. Tube worms 8,000 feet under the sea feed on hydrothermal toxins, deaf, blind, bags of bacteria turning poison into energy. Red blood cells in the body of Andeans work harder, hematology for paper thin air. Organisms can get used to anything, thrive anywhere. 
On the plains, winds can reach 140 kilometers an hour, throw us into trees, buildings, tail spins on ice. We've all sworn we'd die that way or swallowing dust. Prairie, prairie grasses bend, sway, sigh, built for this. You were. Your mesmerizing dance adapted to the worst conditions. Your trick to grow from the base, not the tip. Bite, chew, tug, mow, season after season, you burst up green again, tougher. You had volume, strength, girl balls, hatred, anger. I offered safety, parents, love. We selected each other, our trick in the roots, 12 feet under, deep and entangled, tapping water, holding each other against the tug of teeth, holding the earth in place, stubborn. Boys and men trampled above. 8,000 year old children of glaciers, rooted in sediment, rain shadow, in winter, we burrowed below frost, crystals. In summer, trees burned above, charcoal. We were self-reliant, pollinated on wind, pushing and pulling each other. Speciation. I drifted airborne. You, with all the reasons to leave, dug in, burrowed deeper your children born there. Thank you. That is wonderful. I, I am very fond of environmental poetry and environmental fiction. I, I, I have a deep connection to the earth and this just, this kind of stuff always moves me. So um, I'm you. glad, I'm glad it made the top three. Uh, so let's bring on Charlene, um, our, second our first runner up and uh let's hear this sonnet <laughs> all right um so it's called they say you will teach me more than i will ever teach you i could stay another hour holding swatches up to the light debating the merits of queen anne's lace versus candlewick asking questions like will it match your crib you who will only care about milk and comfort in the beginning blind to all color except the dark circling my nipple, a novice pilot above a helipad. I teeter with the weight of a hundred small things. I'm not asking for Gloucester's or Tiresias's fate, but just a bit of mud and spit, a puddle splashed shin, a baby's bib. Thanks. I love that. I, I, I love the uh, helicopter imagery there. <laughs> Uh, obviously, that is inspired by your uh, the fact you have a six month old, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, our children do provide so much fodder for for new creative endeavors. As I find. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both, um, and congratulations both. The congratulations are pouring in in the comments. Um, you know, well done, winners and. Uh, great stuff everybody agreed huzzah everyone and and i want to say congratulations as well to everybody who was shortlisted it's a it's a big feat um there were well over 100 poems submitted that fit the guidelines and of that uh, you guys were the top 10 so well done everyone thank you to our authors who uh, read today and uh, we are Oh, we're well over time, but I think it has been well worthwhile to have this just a wonderful poetry morning. So thank you, everybody, and uh, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you next Friday.